and welcome to another lesson about formal language theory. Um, in this lesson, we are going to start talking about the notion of grammar rules, um, and we'll continue talking about those in the next uh, several videos. But this one is just talking about what do we mean by a rule, how would we use a rule, um, sort of some basic things, and we'll go through the example of the rules of propositional logic to talk about this new way that we're going to start thinking about rules. So in a grammar, R is considered to be a finite set of rules that take the, this form, um, where both of these Greek letters are strings. Um, and, and these rules can be used to derive strings in a given language. So that's, that's a casual definition of R. We'll give a very formal definition in, I think, the next video. Um, this is a fairly casual definition that is enough to, to explain what R is going to do for us, at least. So um, why do the rules have this form? We'll talk about that in a second. So this is what the set of rules would look like for propositional logic. Now this looks completely overwhelming, but really all that we're doing is putting, is, is formalizing the rules that we've already written out in, in words, right? So we have A, which is a, um, which is one of our, uh, oh, what's the word for that? It's one of the words for our basic, our, our most basic sorts of uh, formulas in propositional logic. Um, so remember that P can be one, Q can be one, and any letter of the alphabet, lowercase letter of the alphabet can be one of these. And then you can also add any number of primes after those, and you can make these basic statements. And after that, you can use a basic statement is a well-formed formula. Any basic statement is a well-formed formula. And any well-formed formula in any of these configurations are also well-formed formulas. That's all that we're saying here, is that if we know this, we know this, right? So um, we don't know if we, if we know that this is not the, right? So this is, this is an implication, right? So if we know that P is true, that P is, is, is good, we know that it's an A. If we have P, we know that it's an A. If we have something that is A, we know that it's a W. If we have something that is a W, we know that not, not W is also a W, right? So this is just a method that we can use to form well-formed formulas. So let's look at how we can do this um, in sort of a flowchart form. So here we have an expression not P, right? Um, we can start down here and say that, well, we have a P, we know that that is a basic statement. Um, we know that if we have a basic statement, we have a well-formed formula, and we know that any well-formed formula plus the not symbol is also a well-formed formula. We could also start at the top and say, well, let's assume this is a well-formed formula. Can we break this down? Um, and we have a rule over here that lets us break this into not W, and we have a rule that lets us break a W into a basic statement, and we have a rule that breaks a basic statement down to P, right? So we can determine that we have a well-formed formula here. Now let's do a slightly more complicated one, right? Um, we have this expression P then not Q, right? P then not Q. Um, we could start, start at the bottom and say, well, Q we can build up into an atomic statement. That's the word I've been looking for, atomic statement. We can build um, this atomic statement into a well-formed formula. And then we can add a not symbol into a well-formed formula. And then we can build P into an atomic statement, the atomic statement into a well-formed formula. And we have a rule that lets us combine two well-formed formulas together in this construction to make another well-formed formula. Um, we might also have started at the top and gone down like that, right? So let's just do one more example where we start at the top and go down. Um, this should be fairly easy for all of you because you have done these before. Um, essentially, you just haven't expressed them this way. So we've got right. We've got five symbols going on here. One, two, three, four. This whole thing is one thing, five, right? So we write. And these. Right, because we have a, a rule that lets us, um, this is our OR rule, we have that rule, so we can replace this with this. Um, this doesn't need to be broken down, this does still need to be broken down, 
we can break that down into an A and we can break that down into a P. This one still needs to be broken down quite a bit. We can break this down into paren and paren and then W and W. And then this breaks down into an A and then into a Q. This breaks down into an A and then into a P. Right, and we know we have a well-formed formula because we had rules that allow us to break it down. Um, if we didn't have a rule that lets it, let us break it down, then we would know that it was not a well-formed formula. So what the rules are basically doing, um, what, we're basic, what we've basically done here is we've taken the sort of casual definition of propositional logic rules that we had before and we've given it a more um, formalized uh, description. Right, so, so this is just a set, this whole thing is just a set of statements like this, right, um, that let us uh, determine this. So in the next video, we will formalize how we combine this idea of rules with our idea of the alphabet in order to actually make a complete grammar, and we'll talk a little bit more about a formal definition of R.